Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Jay. In this episode, we're gonna look at different routing policies of Route 53. Simple routing lets you configure standard DNS records, without special Route 53 routing, such as weighted or latency-based routing. With simple routing, you can route traffic to a single resource. For example, you can use simple routing to route traffic to your website hosted in S3, or to the web server hosted on an EC2 instance. If you choose the simple routing policy, you cannot create multiple records that have the same name and type. However, you can specify multiple values in the same record, such as multiple IP addresses. If you choose the simple routing for an alias record, you can only specify one AWS resource, or one record in the current hosted zone. If you specify multiple values in a record, root 53 sends all values in random order, back to the DNS resolver. The resolver returns the values to the client's web browser. The web browser then chooses a value and send the request. Failover routing routes traffic to the primary resource when the resource is healthy, and routes to the secondary resource, when the primary resource is unhealthy. For failover to function correctly, you must create a primary record and a secondary failover record. You can create only one failover record of each type. The primary record must have health check enabled. Route 53 always tries to route the traffic to the primary resource. When the primary resource becomes unhealthy, Route 53 routes the traffic to the secondary resource. When Route 53 detects that the primary resource becomes healthy again, it routes traffic back to the primary resource. Failover routing lets you create an active-passive failover for your resources. For example, you can redirect your traffic to an error page during your server downtime, and route the traffic back to the primary server when it's recovered. It's recommended that you specify a TTL of 30 to 60 seconds to allow fast failover, when you associate a record with a health check. You cannot create non-failover records that have the same name and record type as failover records. For example, if you've created a simple routing for a domain using C name type, you cannot create failover records for that domain with C name again. Geolocation routing lets you choose the resources that serve traffic based on the geographic location of your users. When you choose geolocation routing, you start by creating one record for each of different geographic locations. You can specify geolocations by continents, countries, or states for the United States. Route 53 route traffics based on the geolocations that you've defined. For example, you can configure all queries from Africa to be routed to a load balancer in the Cape Town region, and queries from Asia routed to another load balancer in Singapore. If you create separate records for overlapping geographic regions, for example, one record for North America and one for Canada, the priority goes to the smallest geographic region. This allows you to route some queries for a continent to one resource, and queries for selected countries on that continent to a different resource. Geolocation routing works by mapping users' IP addresses to geographic locations. However, not all users' IP addresses can be recognized. So even if you create geolocation records that cover all seven continents, Route 53 might receive some DNS queries that cannot be recognized. AWS recommends that you create a geolocation record with a default value. It covers geographic locations which you haven't created records for, and IP addresses that Route 53 cannot recognize. If you don't have a default record, Route 53 returns a no-answer response for requests from those locations. Here are some use cases of geolocation routing. When you use geolocation routing, you can localize your content and present the website in the language of your users. You can also use geolocation routing to restrict the distribution of content only to the locations in which you have distribution rights. Another possible use case is load balancing across endpoints in a predictable way, so that requests from each location is consistently routed to the same endpoint. Geoproximity routing lets you route traffic based on the geoproximity of your users and resources. It also gives options to route more or less traffic to a resource, by specifying a value called bias. When you choose geoproximity routing, you must use Route 53 traffic flow with geoproximity rules. Traffic flow enables you to create complex routing for your resources. If you're using AWS resources, you need to specify the AWS region that you created the resource in. For non-AWS resources, you need to specify the latitude and longitude of the resource. You can expand the size of the geographic region by specifying a positive integer from 1 to 99 for the bias, or shrink the size of the geographic region by specifying a negative bias of minus 1 to minus 99. 
You can use distance formula with the bias to calculate the bias distance. For positive bias, the bias distance equals the actual distance, times the result of 1 minus the bias over 100. For negative bias, the bias distance equals the actual distance, divided by the result of 1 plus the bias over 100. For example, you have load balancers in Sydney and London, and users in Singapore. The distance from Singapore to Sydney is 6,000 km, and Singapore to London is 10,000 km. Because the default bias value is zero, Sydney is closer to Singapore than London. When a user in Singapore enters the domain name in a browser, the DNS query goes to Route 53. Route 53 checks the bias distance and route to the closest resource, in this case it's Sydney. If you set the bias for Sydney to minus 50, and bias for London to 50, the bias distance between Singapore and Sydney now is 12,000 km, and between Singapore and London is 5,000 km. In this case, Route 53 routes all traffic sent from Singapore to London. Latency-based routing helps serve traffic from the resource that provides the lowest latency. If your application is hosted in multiple AWS regions, you can improve performance for users by serving their requests from the region with the lowest latency. To use latency-based routing, you need to create latency records for your resources in multiple AWS regions. When Route 53 receives a DNS query, it determines which region gives the user the lowest latency, and then responds the latency record for that region. For example, you have resources in London and Singapore, and created a latency record for each region. When a user in Paris enters the domain name in a browser, the DNS query goes to Route 53. Route 53 checks the latency, in this case, London region gives the lowest latency, Route 53 routes user requests to London. Please note that Route 53 determines the latency between your users and AWS regions of latency records, regardless where your resources are actually located. Latency between hosts on the internet can change over time, as a result of changes in network connectivity and routing. Latency-based routing is based on latency measurements performed over a period of time. Each latency record must have one AWS region associated with. You can only create one latency record for each region. You are not required to create latency records for all AWS regions. Route 53 chooses the region with the best latency, from among the regions that you create latency records for. You cannot create non-latency records, that have the same values for name and DNS record type as latency records. Multi-value answer routing lets you configure Route 53 to return up to 8 healthy records, such as IP addresses for your resources, in response to DNS queries. Returning multiple health checkable IP addresses helps applications improve availability and load balancing. Multi-value answer routing checks the health of each resource, and only returns values for healthy resources. To randomly route traffic to multiple resources, you create one multi-value answer record for each resource. Optionally you can associate a health check with each record. Route 53 responds to DNS queries with up to 8 healthy records, and gives different answers to different DNS resolvers. If one resource becomes unhealthy after a resolver caches a response, client can try another IP address in the response. If you associate a health check with a multi-value answer record, Route 53 responds to DNS queries with the corresponding IP address only when the health check is healthy. If you don't associate health check with a multi-value answer record, Route 53 always considers it's healthy. All records in the same multi-value answer group must have the same name and DNS record type. Please note that multi-value answer routing doesn't support CNAME for the record type. Weighted routing lets you associate multiple resources with a single domain or subdomain, and choose how much traffic is routed to each resource. When you choose weighted routing, you can create records that have the same name and DNS record type for each of your resources. You assign each record a relative weight that corresponds with how much traffic you want to send to each resource. You can set the weight to a value between 0 and 255. Route 53 sends traffic to a resource, based on the weight of the record, as a proportion of the total weight for all records. If all resources have the same weight, Route 53 routes traffic in equal proportion. This allows you to use Route 53 for load balancing between your resources. Another common use case of weighted routing is for testing new versions of the software, such as Canary release and blue-green deployment. You typically want to send a small proportion of traffic to the new version, while sending the most traffic to the old version. Suppose you have two software versions, V1 and V2. You can use Route 53 for the Canary release, by setting the weight of V1 to 90%, and V2 to 10%, 
so that V1 still gets 90% of traffic, and V2 gets 10% of traffic. When you're ready for a full release of V2, you can let Route 53 stop routing traffic to V1 by setting its weight to zero. If you set the weight to zero, Route 53 stops responding to DNS queries using this record. All traffic goes to V2. In this episode, we've learned different Route 53 routing policies. Simple routing lets you configure standard DNS records and route traffic to a single resource. Failover routing lets you create an active passive failover for your resources. Geolocation routing lets you choose the resources that serve traffic based on the geographic location of your users. Geoproximity routing lets you route traffic based on the geoproximity of your users and resources. It also gives options to route more or less traffic to a resource by specifying a value called bias. Latency-based routing helps serve traffic from the resource that provides the lowest latency. Multi-value answer routing lets you configure Route 53 to perform health checks and returns up to 8 healthy records. Weighted routing lets you route traffic based on the weight assigned to each record. Okay, that's all for Route 53 routing policies. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. If you like the video, please help us and hit the like button. If you want to watch more tutorials, please subscribe to the Cloudemy TV channel. Make sure to turn on the notification and stay tuned. At Cloudemy, we're passionate about cloud and AI technology. Please share your feedback and thoughts in the comments below. Feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to watch. Happy watching and happy learning!